and understand how the system is user friendly. So let us move to the slide uh, screen share. Firstly, the new UI, which is very fresh and sharp and can be configured to the retailer's benefit. Retailers can have their own uh, branding on the UI by changing the color and the logo by minor configuration. Also, the POS has different colors for different modules in it, which is another point to make it user friendly. This feature reduces manual errors, which results in improved productivity. If the user is in the POS module, which is where we are currently, the POS has this color, and if the user moves to the training mode, uh, the color changes to a different one. And if the user goes to the back of his application, then it has a different color. So the different colors in each module of the extra point of sale system help the cashier to quickly know which part of the POS is he or she accessing. If you also see the bottom left corner of the screen, this one, it has a keyboard button. With this feature on the x point of sale, it facilitates seamless integration with the hardware and turns it into a touchscreen user-friendly point of sale system. These are some very basic points uh, which have uh, uh, con which have made the external point of sale system a very user friendly one. Uh, now we have many more features like that. For example, we have a feature which uh, changes the quantity of an item right on the screen uh, without going to without having the need of going to a different button to change the quantity. That being one, the other one is where you can delete an item by just swiping on the screen. So we'll get to uh, see the demo of that uh, in, in, a, in a while. But before that, now let us look at the scenario that Franklin uh, was talking about in the previous slide, where uh, where, a, where a user is, uh, where a store user, let's consider it to be a store manager, is walking into the store and trying to open a store, because that is the very first step that a store user, a cashier, or a manager does. So let us go to the back of his application and see how the store is open. So I'm going to the back of his application, the F12 bottom in the bottom right. And, you, and you, as you can see, the screen, the screen has changed its color, saying that it's into the back of his application now. So I would log in into this. These are some security reasons, uh, security questions that the POS keeps asking. Now here, there are a lot of features that we can go through. So let us first look at the open close options because this is what the store manager would do uh, initially when he walks into the store. So because the store is already open, uh, we won't be able to open the store. However, we have other options like store close, register close, and we can do some reporting as well from here, which is uh, we can uh, print a till summary report, and you can check for updates as well. Now one a very good feature that extra point of sale comes up with is the fourth close option. So if you look at any store architecture, it has a server, it has a, a, a register. But the extra point of sale system uh, acts as a, a lead register also and acts as a, a register as well. So as uh, Franklin was rightly mentioning, that we would, the, uh, uh, the retailer will not have to invest uh, specifically on a back office server. So if uh, consider a scenario where there is an issue, a technical or a hardware issue with the register, and we are unable to close that register. So in, in such a scenario, closing the store would be a problem. So to avoid such scenarios, we have a force close option which closes the register instantly, and then we can proceed with the store close option. Now uh, let us go back to the point of sale system. So I had I did two clicks to go back to the point of sale system. In fact, I could I can just go uh, by clicking just one button, that is register button. So if I go to back office again, so I'll log in. And uh, here I am in the back office application. So by clicking on just register button, the F12 button, I can shift between applications. So just by one click, I can move between different applications, back office, and now I'm in the register. So yeah, as you see, the POS system did not ask me to log in again because I'd already logged in the back office application. So it has avoided or skipped that step of asking me to log in again in the POS. Now let us look at the scenario that uh, Franklin was referring to where let us consider a customer named John is uh, trying to return an item and also wants to buy another item while doing the return and would want to send an item to a different location. So if you see there are three transactions that are uh, taking place here in the scenario. First it is a return, then it's a sale transaction, then there is a delivery as well. 
Let us see how we do these three transactions in the external financial system. The first uh, step, the first soft check that the PO system does is it is asking me to uh, link a sale associate to the customer. So let me select Joe and I click on OK. And there are, the second soft check that the PO system does is it is asking me to link a customer to the transaction. So I have an option of skipping this because I would be adding the customer at a later point. So I would skip the uh, adding of a customer here. And now we are uh, in the uh, POS application, the X4 point of sale application. This is the main screen of the X4 point of sale. This is called the item screen. Now the first step was returning item. So let me go to the return button. So I have F2 if you see, the bottom left corner is the return item. So I click on that. Now if you observe, the screen has changed its color to red. So now this clearly differentiates uh, two different transactions or multiple different transactions. So red is uh, for return transactions. So let me add a customer here because I had skipped adding a customer earlier. Let me add it here. Uh, I had used uh, uh, myself as a customer, so let me add. Because the customer was already added, you see one customer. However, if you have multiple customers with the same name, you would see a list of customers. And then you can also do a select and view to get into the details of the customer uh, and to confirm that, yes, this is the customer. And we would get into the details of uh, uh, what all features we have on the customer uh, uh, addition and customer accessing. So let me go back and let me add the customer again. So now I'll select this customer and proceed with the return transaction. So I uh, click on select and continue. Now this is uh, one check that the point of sale system does where it is trying to figure out if the customer when the customer is trying to return an item, if he has an original receipt of the item, if he has the original credit card that he used while purchasing this item, or if this item was a gift item so that it has a gift receipt, or if it's an electronic item, it would have a serial number. So what the extra point of sale system does is when you're returning an item, it validates the item based on all these factors. Now there could be a scenario where the customer doesn't have any of these details. So let's consider it to be a blind return. So I would say a no here, saying that none of this is available to the customer. Now it is asking me to enter the item number. So I'll enter the item number that John or myself I'm trying to return. So one enter. Now the second check that the return transaction does is whether the customer has already purchased this item. So no matter what the customer uh, has come up with, if he doesn't have a receipt, it's not a problem. If he doesn't have the credit card or any of the uh, soft checks that the X-Store was doing, the PO system automatically goes and checks for the item in the, in the database. I was saying that the customer, the customer history doesn't show that the person has purchased this item. But even then, if the business process agrees, we can still go ahead and do this uh, return. So it gives us both the options. So let me select a yes here. So the next check is it is asking for the reason code. Now these reason codes are configurable. The ones that we see on the screen are pre-configured, uh, out-of-the-box reason codes. So we can select any of these. I do an OK. And just in case you don't find the reason code uh, in your business process, you can you always enter a, a reason code here. So I just enter a test reason code. I click on OK. Now there's another check. Now uh, this shows how uh, flexible or how robust this uh, external point of sale system is where it checks each and every step of a return transaction. And now what it is saying is it is giving me the least uh, uh, price of the item in the store. So it, it checks the history of the item and gives me the least price of the item. The price tag that the customer is returning an item uh, would be different. It might be lesser than what the system is showing. It might be more. So based on that, we can do a return as well. So now we have a price override button here, F3, which we can use to modify the item price uh, to make it more than this or less than this. And now let me just select OK. I would go with the same price that the POS is showing. And now if you see on the sell item screen, we have an item, return. It says return item 1003, and it is a price. So now we're in a return transaction. So the whole, if you look at the PO system, the whole PO system is red in color, which says that we are in a return transaction. That concludes the first step of this uh, scenario. Now, the second step, step of the scenario was we are trying to sell, a, uh, sell an item. So for that, I have to exit this return. I did exit the return, but if you see, the return item is still added to the transaction. So this is one transaction that we are doing. Now, let, let us say that uh, I would want to buy another item. So I would scan an item here. So here, there's a clear difference where the red one is for the return item. The blue one is for a sell item. 
So that completes two steps of the complete process. Now we have another process where uh, consider the customer wants to uh, ship an item to a different location. So that's a special uh, kind of a transaction. For that, I would go to the extended transactions, the F7 button at the bottom if you see. The F7 button, the extended transaction is what will take me to a list of other transactions. So we have multiple transactions here. We have order transaction, which we will see in the next demo, uh, where we talk about how the Xtor point of sale system integrates with an e-commerce system. We'll get, we'll get to that a little later. The next one is the send sale that we're going to use, which can be used to ship an item to a different location. Then we have a layaway transaction where a customer can pay a minimum amount and then would make a, a, a periodic payments until he completes uh, the full payment and takes the item with him. Then we have a special order where, which that we can create when the inventory is not available in the store. Then we have work order for any repairs required. We, similarly, we have many more like warranty, pre-sales and hold account where you can hold the inventory. Customer can request for a whole inventory. So I would select a send sale, which is used to uh, uh, ship items to different locations. So because it's a new transaction that I want to do a send, new send sale, I select a new send sale to button. And if you see that the screen color has again changed. So this is how this is exactly what we're talking about when we say the extra point of sale system is very user friendly. So immediately, as soon as the cashier looks at the screen, he knows exactly what he's doing. Because the customer has already been added, you see the you see the customer name and a little bit of details of the customer. You can either skip this or you can continue with the same customer. So I continue with the same one. I click on OK. And here are the details, the shipping details of the customer. When a customer is enrolled in the Xtor point of sale, there is some basic information that we take from the customer, like the shipping address, postal code, and phone number, and such. So those are the details that we see on the screen. However, we can change these details based on the customer preference. If he wants the item to be de uh, delivered to a different location, we can always modify that here. So I'm not modifying that right now. But there is another step that we need to take here, that is the shipping method. Now, these are pre-configured shipping methods. Uh, every retailer has their own shipping method. They could be using an in-house shipping method, or they could be integrated with a third-party shipping. So let me select a store traffic as an in-house, and I uh, accept this. Now it is asking me to enter the item number that I want to ship. So let me add the item. Right. Now if you see, there is one more item in brown, which says it is a shipping item. Now uh, there is an item which is in blue which says it's a sale item. There is an item which is in red which says it is a return item. So these are three, three different types of transactions that we can do in one. So this, this, this feature of extra point of sale is called a mixed transaction where we save a lot of time uh, of the customer as well as of the cashier where he can assist to a customer based on the different types of requirements that the customer has. So let me finish this transaction by, click, by clicking on add tenders. So I, I click on F10 here, add tenders. Because we don't have a third-party integration for credit card, so we get this uh, warning here. Let me avoid, ignore that. And here we have a list of uh, different tender types. The first one being the cash. Then we have a credit card, we have check, uh, we have foreign currency as well. So there are a, oh, there are a whole list of uh, tender types that you can use to complete a transaction. However, uh, uh, consider the scenario where uh, if XOR is being used in the Middle East, where uh, there is a requirement of a span uh, uh, tender type which is more like a credit card also, but it is referred to as span a tenor type in the Middle East. So adding a new tenor type earlier required writing a new set of or a piece of code to introduce a new tenor type in the POS. But with XOR point of sale, it is very different. Uh, we just have to make some configurations to the XOR point of sale, and we can add a new tenor type. So there is no customization, no code required to be rewritten. All that we need to do is to make some configurations, and we'll have a new tenor type here. That being one, uh, we have also specialized in, in, in introducing new tender types like pay by face, where uh, the, a customer can log into his PayPal account, and when he walks into the store, he just needs to check in. And uh, the cashier, when the customer walks to his uh, walks to the POS store, uh, POS uh, location, can search for the customers in the POS screen and select the appropriate picture by looking at the customer, and then automatically the pay, uh, PayPal account will be deducted with, for the transaction amount. That is one way of doing it. Uh, the other way of doing is Beam Wallet, where uh, the POS is again integrated with the Beam Wallet, and uh, the customer only has to tap his phone on a beacon, and automatically the tra transaction amount is deducted. So there are many more uh, innovative uh, payment methods that we have introduced in the POS system. So let me finish this transaction with cash. I click on OK, and uh, the total amount is $610.
And if you look at the buttons, there are different buttons which round off the amount to the nearest possible amount. So this is 610, so it gives me options from 611 to 700. So let me select a 650 here. And I have two options to complete the transaction. Either I can print a transaction or I can email the receipt to the customer. So let me select print here. And uh, that is how we finish a transaction uh, by issuing the change back to the customer. So here we have seen how uh, different transactions can be clubbed into one and uh, we save a lot of time of the customer and of the cashier and uh, we have a, a very good customer.